Yo, what's going on, Serpa Squad? Tanner here. I'm back again with my Ghost Mantis, and in this one, I'm going to set him up in his vivarium. In last week's episode, I showed you how I built the enclosure itself, so if you missed that one, definitely go back and check it out. But in this one, I'm going to show you how I did everything else. So let's get started. Last time we left off with the enclosure build. I think it turned out great, and we'll scape it in this one. Go back and check out the first installment if you're curious to see how I made it. Anyway, I took some measurements of the inside to appropriately scale the background. My canvas for this is a large piece of 2 inch thick polystyrene foam. I used the measurements to mark for the width. I cut out two pieces to the same size. Then I cut them down to the desired height. The enclosure itself is 12 inches tall, but I cut the foam to 10 inches tall. There's no need to make it the full height because of substrate. I ended up with three identical pieces. I marked for the sides on the back because my initial plan was to have full panels on all sides of the tank. I went on to draw a rough design of rocks on the foam. I want a nice rocky formation full of cracks and a lot of texture. Now it's time to carve the foam. For that I'll use a hot wire foam carving tool. It came with various attachments for different types of cuts. To begin, I carved in all of the cracks and deep areas of the rocks. These gave me a good foundation to work with. Then I used the wire attachment to trim off the bulk and refine the shape. I went back and marked for the rocks once more. I continued carving things out. This is when I added most of the meticulous details. It took a while to get the right texture and look, but eventually I got close. At this point, I went back with a heat gun. This will tighten things up and harden the exterior of the foam. After that, it was looking really close, but it's not quite as detailed as I want. I went back for a final time to add the rest. I think it looks really good now, but the details won't come through until I paint the foam. Instead of making full panels for the sides like I mentioned previously, I decided to make individual rocks. I drew the basic shapes on the foam. I cut them out and carved for the rough details. Then I went back and added the details to match the rest of the background. Here are the final pieces. I think they'll look really good once they're covered in paint. For that I'm going to use Drylock Original Masonry Paint. I got the idea to use this paint from fellow vivarium artist Troy Goldberg. He works extensively with poison dart frogs which like other amphibians are sensitive to chemicals and things of that nature. He's found this paint to be effective and safe to use for his backgrounds. I've never seen him use it like this though. I use a few painting techniques to make the foam look like a real stone wall, or as close to it as I can get. The dry lock itself is white, but it is tintable. For that I have various quickcrete pigments. We'll start the process by mixing up black for the base coat. I poured paint into a separate container and mixed in the charcoal pigment. My recommendation is to mix up extra paint in something that can be sealed. In case you need to do any touch up work or paint other pieces, this will ensure your values are consistent. Once I got the desired color, I went on to paint the foam. I made sure to get it down into all of the nooks and crannies. The desired effect is only possible if we get the piece completely covered. I painted the individual stones as well. I let the paint dry for a few hours. Here's how it looks now. Even with just one coat, you can start to see the detail a little better. I also painted the backs to hide the foam from the outside of the glass. Now we'll add the second coat. This time I mixed it up with a lot less of the charcoal pigment to get a medium gray. I added a blob of this paint to a palette. I applied it to the foam with a dry brush technique. I picked up a small amount of paint with a brush and lightly coated the foam. 
This keeps paint from going into the recessed areas and thus makes the piece look more realistic and dynamic. I applied it to everything and let the paint dry. With the second coat applied, you can really see the details. We can continue exclusively with values of grey, but I want a little more colour. I think it would be neat if a few areas looked oxidized due to higher concentrations of iron. I added drops of pigments to the palette so I can mix up different hues for the remaining layer. First I mixed up brown and added it throughout. I went back with a rusty hue to make the look I described earlier. I also added tan to make things look a little more saturated. Lastly I mixed up a very light grey. I used this for the highlights which concludes this portion of the build. Here's the end result. I think it looks decent. Not my best work by any means, but it should suffice. Either way, I'm excited to fine tune this process and incorporate it into other builds. Let's install it in the tank. As I'm sure you'd expect, I have silicone for that. I applied a few dabs to the back and pressed it onto the glass. I let it cure for a few hours and added the individual stones. I secured these one side at a time. I stuck them to the glass, allowed the silicone to cure for a few hours, and repeated the process on the other side. Once the pieces were in and the silicone cured, I rinsed off the background. In retrospect, I should have done this prior to installing it in the tank. Here it is now. The tank is built, the background is done and installed, and now we can bring the setup to life. First and foremost is the false bottom. Since the enclosure is so small and to make things easier for myself, I decided to go with the sand false bottom. I added a thin layer to the bottom of the enclosure. I've outlined various ways to do this in a dedicated video which I'll link above. Above the sand, I'll add a layer of activated carbon for my charcoal layer. Without getting into too much detail, this will help keep this setup fresh. It also provides more surface area for the springtails to colonize in. Now onto the substrate. Per usual, we'll add a version of my tropical substrate mix. This mix was part of the same batch I used for the terrarium computer desk. It's composed of sphagnum moss, cocoa fiber, orchid bark, coarse sand, tree fern fibers, and aqua soil. I put a good layer into the vivarium. I slipped it up toward the back of the setup to create a better sense of depth. Now we can finally scape the tank. I'm keeping it simple with a few branches of Mupani wood and spider wood. As I typically do, I situated the largest elements first. Once I liked the placement, I secured them together with a bit of hot glue. I went back and added the spider wood branches. I really like the direction of everything and I think it complements the background quite well. Let's add the plants. I don't want the tank to be overcrowded, so I have just a few, including Begonia Rex Spitfire, Ficus Pumula Quercifolia, Hemigraphus Raponda, Philodendron Wend Imbi, Slaginella Fairy Plume, and Talantia Ionantha. I started with the Begonia. I placed it near the hardscape and will use it as a hub to plant the remaining items. Since there won't be many plants, I thought it made sense to use something as beautiful and striking as this. I added the philodendron to its left. This one doesn't grow very large and should look nice as a midground plant. I used the dragon's tongue as a background plant. As it grows, the fine leaves will create good contrast against the other plants. The Salaginella will have the same effect. I used it as an accent plant throughout. Lastly, I placed the Talanzia within crevices in the top of the scape. Before I add the remaining items, I'll cover the bottom with leaf litter. I'll also include a small seed pod. The leaf litter naturalizes the setup, provides nourishment for the cleanup crew and plants, and of course matches the look of the mantis. While on the topic of the cleanup crew, I'll add some springtails. 
These will clean up after the mantis, eat mold, and turn this setup into an ecosystem rather than just a glass box. To finalize the design, I added the ficus. I also gave the setup a good spray down. And there you have it, my mantis' new vivarium. I like how it turned out, and I think that it showcases the animal quite well. You may have noticed that compared to other ones I've done in the past, that it's actually set up somewhat sparsely. Now I did that on purpose because they don't need a lot of coverage to feel secure. They also need a lot of room to molt, so this will give them adequate room to do so. In addition to that, I didn't want to cover up all of the background seeing that I put that much work into it. And lastly, I didn't want the prey items to be able to hide away and just really not be able to be found by him. As I alluded to, this is a male, and unfortunately the males don't live quite as long as the females, which usually max out around 8 months or so. Now this one's in the L6 phase of its life, which is just an indication as to how many times it's molted, and it has two more to go before adulthood. My guess is that we'll probably have it for about another month and a half or two months max before it passes away. Now that's unfortunate, but I wanted to get an older one just so my chances of success would be higher, and thus far I have no complaints. It's a good eater, it's fun to watch, I like handling it, all that sort of thing, and honestly, I really have enjoyed having a mantis thus far. It's probably something I'll explore further, you know, getting different species and that sort of thing, and I don't know, maybe we'll just get some other bugs too. I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what happens. But I really hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Uh, if you wanted to know specifics on care, just do some research on it. All mantises are different. Some require very similar conditions. Others, not as much. But I didn't want to really get into all of that just because this is my first one. I don't really feel qualified to you know, tell you all kinds of information on it. If you want to know more, just do your research before you buy one. I did that, of course. And... Um, I've had good success thus far. So as always, I really hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. And until next time, Serpa Squad, take care and peace.